here uh, hacking and coughing all over everybody. And uh, if, you know, if you think about how you feel when you have a cold, you really don't feel like you're doing a whole lot of talking. And so uh, he called this morning and asked if, if I would be able to do the service. And as long as the sermon was all written for me, which it was, then it was going to work out okay. So we ask that you, whether you're a visitor or or a member, that you sign the yellow cards that are in the pew in front of you. And so let's begin uh, with the beginning of the service there. Have you ever heard the phrase, can't see the forest for the trees? It means to be so caught up with the smaller focuses, the trees, that a grander picture, the forest, is not noticed. After Jesus miraculously fed the multitudes of people, they struggled to see the forest for the trees. Many marveled, and rightfully so, at their earthly needs met through Christ's power. Yet Jesus came for more than providing meals and filling stomachs. He came to provide the greater things of forgiveness and eternal life. Through his teaching, people then, and we now learn more of those greater things for which he came. That all the time could be able to see the forest from the trees. Namely, forgiveness from the tree, the cross to which he would go. Please stand for our opening hymn, Lord, open now my heart to hear. We 
doth rejoice in the daily giving of grace and mercy. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Lord, we honor you for you. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. As a servant of Christ, the bread of life, and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, you for us with forgiveness. Amen. Please stand. The intro comes from Psalm 78, verses 23 to 25. And David shepherded them with integrity of heart, with skillful hands he led them. Yet he gave a command to the skies above, and opened the doors of the heavens. He rained down manna for the people to eat. He gave them the grain of heaven. Men ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. And David shepherded them with integrity of heart. With skillful hands, he led them. I mean. 
test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine, flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle for this morning is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all the humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to the men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fit, fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ so that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part, is working properly. It makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to be Jesus had not entered the 
home with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. We continue with the gospel responsive reading. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when do you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, How much do we do to be doing the work of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that we believe in. Him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what he send you to do when you make him? What work do you perform? Our Father, as we command the Lord, it is written. I give them bread from heaven to you. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven gives life to the world. They said to him, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is the gospel of the Lord.
church, I do not want to go back to the missions of the dead, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus had miraculously fed some 5,000 people 
with five barley loaves and two fish. This was meant to be a sign pointing beyond itself to something even more, to Jesus as Son of God, to Jesus as the source of eternal life, to Jesus as the true bread from heaven, to Jesus as the bread of life. For Jesus, the bread of life, it is the source of eternal life. Unfortunately, the people around Jesus stayed stuck at the sign, at the bread, at the free meal. And Jesus attempts to move them along to lift their sights to a higher level. Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. And so they respond with good intentions. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? So their hearts were in the right place. And Jesus answers, This is the work of God, that you believe in him, he has sent the work of God, the work that God desires of us, the work that God works in us, is not work, but faith. It's not what we do, but what God gives us in Jesus. But the people had trouble catching on, so they said to him, Then what sign do you do, that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it, was, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. They were remembering how God fed his people in the wilderness with manna. Well, today's Old Testament reading is the backstory to our gospel. And Jesus says to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they began to get it. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Well, Jesus' words about never thirsting bring to mind his words to the Samaritan woman at the well in John chapter 4. In those words, it said, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, he told her. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Eternal life is God's gift in Jesus. The bread of life is God's gift. Jesus is the true bread from heaven. Jesus is the bread of life. Well, Jesus wants us, too, to focus on the higher things that he came to give. Jesus' discourse or sermon on the bread of life goes on to the end of John chapter 6. And we'll hear more about that next Sunday as well as the Sunday after that. At this point... Bread, hunger and eating, thirsting and drinking are all metaphors. Put together, all together, they're all about Jesus and believing in Him. Jesus is the source of eternal life. Believing in Jesus is God's work in us, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. As with the crowd that Jesus fed, engaged, and taught, we sometimes tend to stay stuck at the sign, at the lowest level of things, on the material and physical things. We focus on food, on material things, on the things of our earthly existence, on physical and emotional blessings, and on the comforts of this life. But it's for higher things that Jesus came. It's for the purpose of giving and sustaining eternal life that God gave us Jesus. Life with God, our life with God, has been disrupted and 
interrupted by sin. Our deepest hunger, though we don't always realize it, is for God. Jesus, in his suffering and death on the cross, and in his resurrection from the dead, satisfies this hunger, fills the hole that we all have in our hearts for God. He reconnects us with God for eternity. As Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ. Nothing. Bread, despite the bad rap on carbs these days, is a staple of physical life. It sustains life. It's the stuff of life. And so with, with this in mind, what Jesus says, I am the bread of life. If you remember, when he was in the wilderness, tempted by the devil, when he was hungry, he was tempted to turn stones into loaves of bread. And Jesus quoted words from Deuteronomy 8, which said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus is that living word. He says in John 5, As the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. That's John 5, 26. Jesus told the crowd, You are seeking me because you ate your fill of the loaves. Well, what do we seek from Jesus? We often seek what we can get from Jesus rather than seeking Jesus himself. We seek feel-good things. We seek things on every other level than spiritual. In describing Jesus' feeding of the 5,000, John says, Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them. When he had given thanks. Thanksgiving is not just for, but to. Giving thanks is about relationship with the giver. God is the giver. In today's epistle, Paul reminds us that Jesus feeds and nourishes his body, the church, to build it up in faith, love, and maturity. Ephesians 4 verse 7 says, Grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Grace to live life fully, faithfully, and eternally with God in relationship with God. We often feel threatened by so many things. Aging, health concerns, hostility, antagonism from the world around us and the people in it. Weakness, brokenness, failure, and regret. More than anything else, we need to feed on Jesus in faith. When we feed on Jesus in faith, we live eternally. We live and die in the same confidence and assurance as the dying man and his family in the story in which we began. We know where we'll be found. In Jesus' name, amen. I continue with the offering.
Ed Ukai, Paul's brother, who is going through rehab for a hip replacement. We also pray for a number of people in our bulletin today. Uh, for our birthdays, for Kathy King, Myra Davenport, Gabrielle Van Hampler, Sally Trump, Carnell Falk. For our shout-outs, for Ken Nick, for Dorothy McTavish, for George Moore. We pray for others who are sick and healing for the, the Reek, Corona, and Yawa family, um, Gladys Hill, um, their uh, grandmother uh, and great-grandmother was called to her eternal home this week, so we remember the Reek, Corona, and Yawa family in our prayers. For Diane Brown with back pain issues. For Bill Morrison recovering from surgery. For Karen Morrison suffering from vertigo and allergic reaction to medicine. For Derek Swinner and family for safe travel. For Barbara Parisi, Frank's sister. We pray that, uh, that with her treatments that the cancer will be in remission. We pray for Gail French who's in rehab recovering from surgery. And we pray for Shirley Griffin for her upcoming surgery, treatment, and recovery. So we continue with the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Ever present, Lord, in this world, a place of sin and wilderness, you give us what we need to sustain our bodies and lives. Greater than anything, you sent your Son from heaven to be the bread of life, that we never hunger for grace and forgiveness. We humbly ask you to be with us, sustain us, Lead us and guide us through this land all our days. We sing, first one, guide me, O thou great redeemer.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, and everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is your word incarnate, and who on this day spoke your powerful word of victory over death and the grave by his glorious resurrection, opening to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. <laughs>
supplying not only for our stomachs, but for our souls. Sustain us in faith and life in Christ, that we may do the good you desire, and faithfully live out our days in your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now the benediction. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Which the Son of Man will give to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd, I'll not want. Uh, any other announcements? 